uh, that we have been in the Garden of the Heart talking about abiding in the written word with the living word and how the word of God uh, shapes us into the image of Jesus. And tonight, I'm very excited because uh, we've been talking a lot about the why and the what, but tonight we get to talk about the how, the practicals of how we abide in the word. Now, just as a little disclaimer right up front, everything you're going to hear tonight is really more descriptive than prescriptive, okay? We're not saying that this is the way. We're saying that this is a way, uh, and hopefully you find it a helpful way to engage with God and his word. And we're going to bring up uh, in just a little bit our amazing pastor's panel, which as I was thinking in my head, there's going to be over 100 years of experience up on this stage in studying the word of God. That's a lot of wisdom. Most of it coming from one guy right here, but <laughs> over 100 years, a lot of wisdom. And so I'm uh, looking forward to our pastor's panel. But before we dive into that, uh, I wanted to just do a brief overview of, again, a way that we can very practically get into the Word of God. And if you've been around church, if you've been around uh, New Hope especially, uh, then you may already be familiar with something that is called the SOAP method. Raise your hand if you're familiar with the SOAP method of getting into the Word and of journaling. Amen. And so SOAP is an acronym that stands for Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer. And it's a really simple form of inductive Bible study where we look at what the Word of God says and we uh, partner with the Holy Spirit to apply it to our lives. And so uh, if you've never cracked open a Bible, if you've never tried to see what the Word of God says for you, then this is going to be very helpful, I believe. And again, this is not prescriptive. This is a description of a way that has helped many, many people. In fact, raise your hand if you went to the men's breakfast this morning with Pastor Wayne Cordero. Any of you guys make it to the men's breakfast this morning? Pastor Wayne is actually the originator of the soap Bible study method. And so uh, we get to uh, go through this together. And so the very first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find your Bible, your Bible app, or your Bible website. Now, I know that there are some people in the room who are probably thinking, Pastor Mark, if you're not reading out of a hard copy Bible, then you're just not holy. Or I don't know, or the Lord's not going to speak to you. And I think that's completely untrue. But I used to be a diehard, hard copy Bible guy until I discovered Bible Gateway. BibleGateway.com is, in my opinion, the greatest Bible study tool, completely free. And I don't know if you can see some of this stuff, okay? So this is the daily devotion for March 8th, okay? If you click on this button right here, you can bring up multiple translations for free, every translation for free, and parallel them across the screen. They'll create parallels so you can compare the NIV with the NKJV with the NASB and the ESV as many, and let's not forget... Wait, is it, Pastor? Is the pigeon version on Bible Gateway? Yeah. Even get the pigeon version on Bible Gateway. So throw that one up there, too. Okay? This is a, another great feature. This, you can have someone read it to you. So a lot of people say, oh, you know, Pastor, I'm just not a reader. It's hard to get into the Bible because I'm just not a reader. Well, that excuse doesn't exist anymore. Because you can have some of the top world-class narrators Read the Bible to you. I use that feature when I'm in the car. You know, sometimes I'll be honest with you guys. I just don't feel like reading that morning. And so I will just click the button. I will close my eyes and I will let someone read to me. And, uh, you know, the really cool thing is uh, I don't know what it is, why I do this, but there's this one British narrator. I just really, I don't know. He just has more authority. He's like David Attenborough from Planet Earth. It just, I feel like it's more anointed when he reads it for some reason. And so another great thing about Bible Gateway is all the free commentaries, right? You got all these free commentaries written for leaders, written for women, written for every walk of life, you know, to bring insights out of the word. And so bring out your scripture, right? Whether it be through your paperback, your hardcover, your app, or your website. And then what do we do next? Just immediately start reading? No, hold on, hold on just a minute. We want to invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Amen? 
We believe that the word of God is living and active. And this time, remember, as we talked about last week, is not just a time to have some sort of scholarly experience. It's not a time to sort of get some sort of self-help from what we're about to read. No, we are apprentices of Jesus. And so we really approach this time to sit at the master's feet and to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us to highlight something to us. We call this the Holy Spirit highlighter. You'll hear a little bit more about that in the panel in just a little bit. But the Holy Spirit will highlight something to you. And that passage, whether it's a single verse or a passage, will become your S in soap, your scripture. So you write it down in your journal. And this just so happens to be a very famous passage, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Let's say you're reading in John chapter 3 and verse 16 gets highlighted to you. Whoa, that just hit me. Okay, I'm writing that down. That's my S for today. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make observations about this passage. O is observation. Now, if you don't know what you're looking for, remember in elementary school when we were taught reading comprehension and they say, what are you looking for? You're looking for the five W's and the one H, right? Who, what, when, where, why, and how, right? So this is, a great, this is a great framework for making pretty simple observations about what you're reading, right? Who are the main characters? Who are the people being mentioned in this passage? Okay, what is going on here, right? When did these events occur? Where is this taking place? Why is this passage significant or important in the, in the context of things? And then how? How does this passage relate to either other parts of the Bible or uh, to something that I've read before? So again, not that you have to answer all these questions, but if you're wondering how to make observations of the passage, that's a good place to start. So for John 3, 16, right? The who could be God. God, what? He gave his one and only son. When? Well, Jesus came 2,000 years ago. Where? In Israel. Why? So that we wouldn't perish, but that we would have eternal life. How? Through belief in him. You're just making observations about what it is you're reading so to help you get into the text, right? And then from those observations, you move on to your application, okay? This is how you're going to apply what God is speaking into your life. Now, something you have to remember when you're making your observations is that the Bible was written for you, but it wasn't written to you. Does that make sense? It wasn't written to you, meaning you weren't the original audience. Jesus was speaking to people of that time. So it doesn't make much logical sense to ask first and foremost, what is Jesus saying to me today, right? It helps for us to understand first and foremost, what was Jesus saying to them then? And then from there, we then pull that principle out of scripture for ourselves. Now, again, a helpful framework for application uh, are three H's. H-H-H, it stands for head, heart, hands, okay? So if you're asking, how do I apply what the Lord is saying here to me? Think head, heart, and hands. Head stands for any revelations, any truths, any beliefs that God is showing you in Scripture. Oftentimes, James describes the Word of God as a mirror, right? When you get ready in the morning and you look at yourself in the mirror, you see things that look good. And if you're like me, you see things that not so good, you know, things that you, you want to work on, things you want to fix before you present yourself to the public, right? So the, the Bible is the same way. You're going to see things that you resonate with, and then you're going to see truths. You're going to see revelation. You're going to see beliefs. You're going to see paradigms in there that you're like, I don't know if that's me. But the Bible, the Word of God says that this is how we ought to believe, but I know I'm not there, right? So how might God want us to transform in our thinking, in our beliefs, in, in our values, right? Second is our heart. What is the Lord saying about my desires? What is he saying about my attitude? What is he saying about the character, the fruit that I possess, right? Lord, what is this passage saying about, you know, uh, the things I should desire or the things that, um, 
the attitudes or beliefs that I should have, right? And then finally, hands, right? This is the practical, what is my point of obedience here? What is the action on my part? So again, very practical way to think about application when it comes to scripture. And then finally, uh, oh, so for John 3.16, for example, right? Um, you know, you can ask yourself these questions, right? Uh, eternal life comes through belief in the Son of God. Do I truly believe that God sent his Son for me? Right? God says that he loves me. Right? Have I experienced that love? In my heart of hearts, can I honestly say I have experienced that love of God, that love of God for the world that prompted him to send his son? And if so, how is that love shaping my life? Right? How do my actions, how does my love, how does my life then reflect the love I have received from God? So these are all application points from John 3.16. And then finally, we take everything that we have uh, received from Scripture, and we turn it into a prayer, okay? And so uh, a possible prayer could be like from John 3.16, 3, Lord, thank you for your word today. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for me. Jesus, thank you for revealing your love for me today. I pray that my life would reflect your love for me. And this is just, this is not a real prayer. This is just a hypothetical prayer, okay? I'm not talking about Jack, the Jack in our church. I just thought of a name off the top of my head. This is my actual journal. No, just kidding. <laughs> Help me to forgive Jack or whoever you need to forgive and extend him the same grace you've extended me. Give me an opportunity to share your love with him. Amen. So practical, right? New ways of thinking, new ways of believing, heart shift, and also practical next steps, right? This is a great way to, uh, to think about application and then ask the Holy Spirit to help you. So again, this is one way, one of many ways to abide with Jesus. It does not have to take hours, right? It could take half an hour. If you're pressed for time, it could even begin with like 15 minutes, right? But start simple, start small. But start now, uh, and, and here's the thing I want to share with you, okay? Remember, we're talking about hard copy Bibles, right? You know, hard copy Bibles are not more holy than, than, the, than websites or apps, okay? You want to know the best translation? You want to know the best Bible that's out there? Anybody know which one it is? It's the one you read the most, okay? So just get into the Word of God. Now... I used to be, how many of us are, are journalers? When it comes to devos, we do our soaps in a journal or, you know, we're writing it down somewhere, okay? I used to be the spiral soapy journal guy. And let me tell you, over the years, I've got bookshelves full of them. <laughs> and you want to know how many times I've gone back through those to really reflect on the things God has spoken to me? Zero. What? Okay? <laughs> you you will probably never crack those things open ever again, okay? And this was like an issue for me because God spoke some really great things to me over the years and I don't know where they are, okay? I can't find them and I'm not gonna go back and find them, I'm sorry. So I thought, man, uh, my dad did a thing where he has this Word doc, this living document, right? It's like a Word doc, right? Like, decades of soap journals in that Word doc. It's just a running doc. And I thought, man, I need something like that. And then I thought, what if I don't have to reinvent the wheel? I wonder if someone has already done this, okay? If you have been soap journaling, if you have been doing devos, and you hear nothing else, this is my gift to you, okay? It's called One Day, or Day One Journal. Day <laughs> One Journal, guys. It's free, okay? So let me show you guys. That, that's the website, Day One Journal. This is my Day One Journal, okay? This is my specific Day One Journal. Thumbnails of all your journals. Images. You can drop an image in there, and then it creates a thumbnail. Boom. You might be thinking to yourself, Pastor Mark, why didn't you show us the most recent, like, to date of your journal? Well, there's gaps. I wanted to show you a time where I was on fire and I didn't miss any <laughs> pukas, okay? I'm, I'm, I was ashamed, I'll be honest. I was like, I want to show them a good run that I had. But, you know, those are the thumbnails, right? And then you do this, right? You, you drop the image, right? You have that, right? This was, a, this was back in um, 
January of this year, and this Devo shaped some of the messages that we had in our series, right? So God speaks, and then you're able to share it. So there's thumbnails. Where do I get the images for my, for my journal? AI, free. You know, if I, if I did a, a journal on the vine and the branches, that was not a Google image. I AI'd, uh, give me a picture of like vine, fruit on a vine. Boom, it made, that image has never existed before. That's specific to my journal, right? AI generated images, totally free. It's a great way to put thumbnails in your thing. And anyway, the power of this is that I can do a word search now. I could say, where's all my journals on abiding, right? Boom, every single one of my journals that has, is about that theme pops up. This is gonna revolutionize your journaling, guys. Day one journaling, it's free, it's fun, it's creative, it's artistic. Um, and the other cool thing is if you do it multiple years in a row, right? When you go to January 1 and you click on it, it brings up January, your journal for that day, and it brings up all your past January 1 journal entries. So if you've done like one reading plan over and over again, you get to see what you journaled the year before and the year before that on that day. It also geotags it, so you can pull up a journal entry and be like, oh my gosh, I, I was in Japan that day, or I was on the big island that day when I journaled this. Like, it's amazing. This is the future of journaling, guys, and it's free. There is a premium version, but that's like if you want it across all your devices, or I think if you want to add extra journals. I just use this for soap journaling, and it's free, and I haven't really had to pay anything more on top of that. So day one journaling will revolutionize your journaling experience. So check that out, um, biblegateway.com, another amazing resource. And uh, if you are looking for a Bible reading plan, our website and our app provides the yearly plan. But with that said, I've taken enough time. I want